This video demonstrates the Elios XMR laser tuberculosity procedure. We start off with the classical MIGS positioning, tilting the patient's head 4 degrees away and tilting the microscope 40 degrees as well. This provides for an optimal view with a gonio prism, some viscoelastic on the cornea, and uh, we now see the probe handed off to the surgeon connected to the XMR laser unit. This probe has a diamond-shaped platform, elevated platform, where the first finger will be placed to ensure the bevel, which is 25 degrees, will be nicely opposed to the angle. Uh, here we're showing the uh, grip here uh, with the first finger on top of that platform and placing uh, the probe through the incision. This is a pencil grip initially for the left side of the uh, angle we'll be treating. This is a Swan Jacob on our left hand. This probe is 500 microns outer diameter resulting in 200 micron openings. The uh, ostomies are made about 50 microns or one tip width apart. And this is again xenon chloride 308 nanometer wavelength delivery here using low energy. You can see each shot, uh, the foot pedal is depressed. It's a two second duration shot. And once we have uh, the two seconds up, we lift off the foot pedal and we move to the next spot. You can see some blood reflux, which is normal to see here. So I'm just gentle up position, not pushing too hard. And we center the probe on the anterior border of the pigmented TM. This results in some nice openings uh, directly into the trabecular meshwork. We change our grip a little bit as we go to the right, more of an overhand grip, as you can see. This allows for coaxial placement uh, and uh, adequate ostomy formation. We have 10 shots, as we said, about one tip diameter apart. We'll do one more in the infranasal quadrant, as this is, of course, the most important quadrant to hit, considering the abundance of aqueous veins uh, in that vicinity. Uh, we have now performed 10 shots over the uh, infranasal and nasal angle. We will hand off the probe back here, and we can now look into the angle, injecting some viscoelastic, just to visualize those ostomies that have been made and we'll see nicely uh, as they uh, are spaced apart. You can see here uh, the openings, a little bit of air bubble formation, which is normal, some gas bubbles there. And we can see in some cases here the evidence uh, of the back wall of the sclera, that white pearly uh, color coming through the ostomies here, showing a full thickness. Now we're going to provocative testing. We lower the pressure in the eye. Here we can actually see blood reflux emanating from those ostomies, showing proof of principle that we have created full thickness channels. This is normal to see blood reflux, uh, nicely demonstrating uh, the openings, but it's important, of course, that we do prevent uh, excessive uh, blood reflux into the eye, and certainly not at the end of the case. Notice this is a combined case during FACO. Before we come out, we inject uh, saline into the eye to avoid uh, further blood reflux. Uh, I should mention that we did do the eczema laser procedure here prior to FACO. We find the views the best, the globe's firm, and we have the best uh, chance for creating uh, visibility. Uh, the uh, IA is done. It's important to remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber, including behind the lens, to prevent early uh, pressure spikes. Um, and this is, of course, facilitated by removal of all the viscoelastic in the eye. Uh, at this point, we will uh, look here. Uh, this is using a direct view DVX lens, and we can actually nicely see um, here the ostomies here. This is uh, doing a, a view here without tilting the microscope, um, and again, just further evidence that we have uh, good um, uh, placement of these ostomies, uh, minimal blood reflux here, which is great. Um, and as we inject BSS into the anterior chamber with infusion, we nicely demonstrate passage of aqueous into the aqueous veins. We can see uh, the blanching of those, of those episcleral and aqueous veins, uh, showing in particular in the vicinity of where those ostomies were made. Um, passage of aqueous is demonstrated here with pressurization of the anterior chamber and some palpation of the sclera, some box carring here, and also some trilaminar flow present here in the uh, all the nasal quadrants where the ostomies were performed. And this is nice to see as evidence on the table that we have achieved increased outflow in those areas where the ostomies were performed. Uh, again, this is a nasal, nasal placement through a temporal clear incision, which is what we typically use for mixed procedures. Uh, we uh, can also see, again, uh, the small blanching of those um, smaller uh, episcleral veins. Injections from Tripan Blue will nicely demonstrate staining of those ostomies, as we can see, present uh, throughout the entire nasal uh, angle, demonstrating where those ostomies were made here uh, using Tripan Blue to stain um, the areas uh, where the channels were made, demonstrating uh, the openings. At the end of the case, it's important to prevent uh, blood reflux and hyphema, to prevent pressure spikes, and before we pull out, we inject BSS into the anterior chamber, hydrate that wound to ensure it's watertight, preventing any hypotony occurring toward the end of the case, which will prevent uh, blood reflux. 
pressurizing the eye to about 25 to 30 millimeters of mercury, uh, which will resolve quite quickly. And we see at the end of the case, there's no blood in the anterior chamber. 